What's up guys, welcome to Mad Motors, episode one. This is brand new, so I don't know how this is gonna go, but today we have an amazing car. The Toyota Starlet SR, correct? Yeah. It is an SR? Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> I wanted to make sure, because I know there's a few different variants of the Starlets, um, but this thing is incredible, as you can already see. So we're gonna do a bit of a walk around this, and then we're gonna ask some questions. So just take a nice minute to enjoy the visual aspects of this absolute machine. Let's go. So, this is the owner of this incredible machine. Would you like to introduce yourself? My name's Matt, and this is me, Starlet SR. Tell us a little bit about this car that you've built. Well, I've had it for nearly 13 years now. It's undergone way too much work what the time I've had it. I think it's too much. So at one point, it was a full Glanzer rep, full Glanzer front end, everything. T37 rep wheels, and they got bored of that, so that's the point, it got fully stripped down, rebuilt from the ground up, everything's been rebuilt, all brakes have been rebuilt, all suspension's fully rebuilt, sat on my store, coil lovers, they've been built up, rebuilt from the ground up, all engines been rebuilt, just really, everything done to it, got as many decent parts as I can on it. So a lot has been done. <laughs> <laughs> what made you want the Starlet? What, what was your decision on that I car? I don't know, but ever since I first started driving, I wanted one. Yeah. When I first passed Jess at 17, I just couldn't, afford the insurance on it and then when I got rid of my third car seeing this come up for sale I was like got tight <laughs> okay so it wasn't like one of them cool like 80s commercials or something that comes up on TV and you go like I want that one kind of thing like I didn't mean a friendship with Toyota so I was yeah. always into Toyotas anyway yeah it was just like well, that's perfect, one, though. one of these cars I always wanted yeah because it's just because I've seen quite a few of them modified ones and with bits done to them and stuff like yeah. that I just want, I just, something I always wanted, so okay. when I got yeah. hold of it, I was like, I'm not letting go of it now. You can definitely tell he's a Toyota man because he's got Toyota on his arm there. So. Yeah. <laughs> right, so what have you done to this car in some detail? Because I know the viewers like to hear a lot about car content, seeing as they're watching a car video. So <laughs> let's well, like see what's said, going it's, it's been rebuilt from ground up. I've fully polybushed it all the way through. Hold on, uh, we're, we're, just, we're just seeing this absolute beast. <laughs> Several months later. <laughs> I swear, it's like look at him just, 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 just disappearing into the fog. It is getting foggier and foggier, isn't it? It looks really dark over there, like there's going to be an apocalypse summon. And then over there, it's quite nice. Morning, night. What's going off here? And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Alright, so as we were saying, <laughs> where do we even get up to? <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's been rebuilt from the ground up. It's had all, all new brake lines, brake loses, everything. So all the brakes have been rebuilt, that sort of side of it's all been done. Bushes have been in place with poly bushes, so they're going to last and it handles better on track. Yeah. It's got Meister coil lovers, Meister R coil lovers on it. They've been fully rebuilt, so I bought them second hand and thought, well, I'm, while I'm doing it, I might as well rebuild them all, get them, get them all spot on. Yeah. 
Nice though. All engines been rebuilt from ground up. Still the standard 1.3 at the minute. We'll get turboed at some point. But yeah. still for now it's the standard 1.3. Turbo potential. Yeah, ev yeah, eventually that's the plan. So is that like so I know obviously there's the Glanza variant of them, if I'm saying that right. Yeah. Glanza, Glanza. Yeah, that's, um, that's the import version. So does from. that have a turbo stock then? Is that like the turbo? The Glanza V comes stock with a turbo. Okay. The so Glan would that be the Glanza S, which is the non-turbo version of the Glanza V. But they're right. the imports only. This is the UK spec limited edition SR. Yeah, the both they made 750 the SR. That's one another thing that drew me to it, because we've been limited edition, I thought, wanna get it, wanna get it right, you want to get decent, look after it to okay. so last, because they're getting rarer and rarer nowadays. Yeah. So you say this is limited edition? Yeah. So do you know how many there is or it was 750. I think there's only about hundred if that now. Nah. The Toyota Starlet is a subcompact car manufactured by Toyota from 1973 until 1999. Launched in April 1973 as the higher grade and bigger model of Publica P30, the Starlet was offered with 1000 and 1200 cc engines. The body style was originally only available as two-door coupe. The four-door sedan arrived in October 1973. It was never sold in Europe, despite the popularity in that continent, particularly in the United Kingdom, of the similar-sized Datsun Cherry, produced by Toyota's rival manufacturer Nissan, as well as the success of modern new superminis like the Fiat 127. Clean 60 series starlets are becoming more difficult to acquire, largely to their age and susceptibility to rust. Many starlets have also been converted into track and rally cars on account of their rear-wheel drive layout. Their scarcity has led to them becoming a relatively valuable collector's car. The three-door KP61 was the only starlet ever sold in the US, where it was available from the 1981 through the 1984 model years. The P70 series of October 1984 saw the Starlet switch to front-wheel drive, which was now the normal format for cars of this size. The Starlet 90 series, introduced in 1996, retained the same three or five-door hatchback ideas. The 90 series Starlet shared its platform with the Paseo including suspension, engine, and many other components. So you say turbo in the engine, can we have a look at what's under there now? Yeah, Perfect. So as you can see, professional work right here. It looks clean. <laughs> go that far. It's clean. <laughs> Ooh, hello. So obviously, first thing people are going to notice is the Lego block. Yeah. Obviously. That like. gets a lot of attention when we go to shows. So every show we've been to, we'll just be walking around and we'll be near your car. And we'll just hear people go, oh, look, Lego blocks. Yeah, and then just much. come straight to it. That happens all the time. But not only that, if you look closer, so I know, obviously, I've seen you've painted that. Yep. You've painted that as well. What kind of paint is that? That's just standard black paint, but it's got red metal yeah. fleck in it. I don't. I mean, the camera shows a little bit, but in person, like, the amount yeah, of really see it unless that is that. Just so cool. What else have you done under here, like paint-wise, then for the people? Engine bay's been fully repainted to match the wheels. Yeah. So it's, the black bits have done with the red metal fleck. So the Lego block color match as well. Yeah. So I know, like I said, it's all, all engines have been rebuilt, all engine blocks have been painted black, all gearbox been painted black, so it all ties in nice, look nice and neat. Yeah. And where do you think your turbo is going to go? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the main yeah. question. I saw a lot of this online, like on, I think it was Instagram, was it? That yeah. You posted it on. I saw like the progress of this getting painted out, and it was so cool to see the engine just taken out, yeah. resprayed, and like, how long did that take? I don't think it took that long, did it? Did it every night after work for two weeks? Two weeks for full respray. Yeah, that's and, like solid work then. Yeah, that engine art, engine rebuild, respray it all. Yeah, and then back in. Dedication. Okay. Let's move inside of the car because I know there's a few things in there, and there's one thing in here that I quite like that I hope is still in here because I know it was with the old one. But underneath the banner up here, have you still got all the stickers? Oh yeah. But it's like all the shows that you've been to and stuff like that. You've just put it's them a under there. Collection of stickers. There's so many under there. Oh, you got a 2022 up there. <laughs> is yeah, that your most latest one? Yakushi one. <clears throat> that yeah. is so cool. It's such a good show idea. Showing shine at Yakushi, that's why I've got the sort of Yakushi stick on front oh, as well. Yeah. Oh, mate, the spare. So this is obviously going to be like a Dragon Ball reference. Oh yeah. <laughs> and obviously Mansfield modified for anyone who wants to uh, have a look at this. So whilst we're back here, the spoiler. Both of them. Both of them. Although I have to say, this one does look like a fridge handle. Yeah, I do like that. 
Mike but Firebringer. You would not you would not open the bonnet just, or the boot, sorry, with that, would you? No. So one thing I do know is the Scarlet SR sticker. Yeah. If they even heard that. <laughs> so I know who designed that. You wanna talk about that little SR sticker? Yeah, I last designed it, Becky. Bolt stickers on car she's done. So she's done the Starlet SR stickers. That the Starlet's the original Starlet st sticker, or come on yeah. car standard. And she just tweaked it a bit and had the SR underneath yeah. it. So I, I think I was there when she was like editing it and showing you different versions of it on the laptop. Yeah. And like just how cool it is that it, it kind of matches the same letters and all that. Yeah. Because I don't think I've ever seen an SR with SR on it like that. No. So is it, there another one like unique. it? Because it's, yeah. It's obviously Instagram. If you want to go see more of the car and where it's been. D's missing. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't even <laughs> notice that. So I'll edit in like a D there. Yeah. <laughs> Fair, a lot, a lot of the work, the whole work's been done by me, but. Yeah. Our last and my dad's both been a massive help with it. Because my dad's helped me out no end with all engine and stuff like that. Yeah. And our last has helped me out with all stickers and bits and bobs like that and help us out getting little paintwork done and stuff. We'll so as much as I've done it with Zen, it's we went for the family around me and everything. Yeah. So it's a family car then, it's family car. <laughs> family built. <laughs> it's family. I got family. Right, so the next most in interesting part of the interior, what's what's going on in here then? So I've got the OMP Tristy bucket seats. Yeah. And ignore are they, ignore the patchwork. <laughs> ignore the patchwork. <laughs> it's just race car stuff though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah OMP Tristy bucket seats with OMP harnesses. Yeah. But on a scale of one to ten, how comfortable are they? I get quite comfy enough to fit. Yeah. I reckon this I reckon this hard. Because I know a lot of people say that they're either really uncomfortable or difficult to get in and out of, but then I've heard some people say they're yeah, actually they quite snug as well. I'm used to getting in and out, in and out of them, so it yeah. don't bother me no more, but I'm, when other people come to get in passion seat, it's hilarious <laughs> sometimes, watching them struggle to get in and out. I've got pod, a pillar pod gauge to go in, as it already? I just haven't yeah. fitted them yet. Okay. And then eventually you get the turbo, you'd have a boost gauge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have a boost gauge. Yeah. you got to know when you've got to shift for that extra boost, <laughs> that little light comes on. <laughs> Other ideas for the exterior, like bodywork that you would want to add on? I want to get... Uh, wide know, body kit, fair. Liberty Walk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know to be fixed. To be fair, I like it as it is now on the outside. Yeah. You know the other thing I want to do again? I want to get some eyebrows or something like that front. Just want yeah. to try and make the front look a bit more aggressive. With the back end that's on it now, it looks really aggressive at the back. Yeah. And the front doesn't quite match. It's like all aggressive at the back and then cute little Japanese girl. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm right half and half careful with stuff that I do on it because I'm trying to do it so it looks nice but not too much. Yeah. Like with bonnet vents and stuff like that, half and half with them. That would another yeah. one of our lasses' ideas with putting bonnet vents on it. But measure it about 10 times before yeah. you cut it. <laughs> I mean, like looking here, they look spot on. So you, you've done a good job with them. One thing I didn't look at actually, whilst we're back here, is the exhaust. It's got a fully custom cat back exhaust with three inch outward roll tip. That would done a place for also like stainless exhaust specialists. Okay. That's one of the few things I haven't done myself. <laughs> it does sound really nice as well. Um, potential crackle mod one day? Nah. Two flames, maybe? Nah, don't suit stuff like that. <laughs> I'm guessing it's Japanese, I'm not too sure, but what does that say? <laughs> That's once been modified. Oh, right, okay. So did you have to like Google Translate that and then... No, that got done, I can't remember, I can't remember where we got that done. We've done about six, seven, since the club first started up. Alright. We've got, got, got some plates made up we are. And then we've just gone from there with it. I mean, you can see yet again with the Lego as well, I don't know if I've pointed this out. The Lego dust caps, they are wicked. I did have a look at some of them online and I was tempted. We've spoken about the car you have now. What cars have you had in the past? Like, what was your first car? 900cc Fiat Cinquecento. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Little blue box on wheels it was. <laughs> Slow as oh, but first car, it was fun. Yeah. That went to got a little 1.1106. Okay. So a mint little car to be fair. So you got down the Peugeot line. Yeah, and then when that went, I got an added Escort, Mark 6 Escort for like three months. Okay. Kept breaking down on me. You were, yeah. So a fix or so repair then, daily. Pretty much. And then got rid of that and then got this. Talking about the history of cars, what was the first car that you did any modifications to? What got you into it? The Cinquecento. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I got it, I like Was that modifying it or because it broke and you had to fix it? or no, modifying it. Yeah? What was the first thing you did? Can you remember what the first thing was? Air filter. Indu induction air filter. Why is it the same thing that I did? <laughs> my Fiesta, my first Fiesta, my mate was just like, put an induction kit in it. I was like, okay then. It always seems to be like the, the first thing anyone does. It's the easiest thing when you first pass your test in it just to make yeah. a better noise. Yeah, it, it definitely did. This is a hard question. Money is no worry. What is the car you're getting? Any car. Old. 
<laughs> this oh, is the tough oh, question. Uh, Nissan GTR. Nissan GTR, but which one? Uh, Hakusu. I'm sure it's Hakusu. Go on. I'm sure it's like Nazi. One of them or an old 70s sleek. Still staying with the Japanese car yeah. market there. It's got to be something. Definitely. Something Japanese, no matter what. Think you would keep it stock or would you modify I'm it? I'd modify it all the Yeah, all the way. So. What is the power stats for this car? What's the horsepower? Not clip. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you know what they come as stock? They're about or? 75 standard, and this is not far off standard. So. so and then obviously some years onto it. Like what what age what year is this car? 98. 98. 20. No, this car is as old as me. Yeah. <laughs> as we've seen on the other side from the sticker and obviously your hoodie, Mansfield modified. What is it? Tell us a little bit about that. This local club started it. We started by my mate's dad, Sinbad. And they were just, because we all used to go to shows with different clubs. Yeah. So we were all going to the same show, but we were in different stands scattered throughout the show. Okay. So we were like, well, we'll just start our own club up. We can all go to the shows together. And it's just what it's, that's, what, that's what it started at. And then since then, it's just been invited people over. We want just chilled out, yeah. family based club, and everyone's welcome. And we're just all a good laugh together. Yeah. Does it have to be a modified car? No. So it's Mansfield, anything. Yeah, even though it's called Mansfield Modified, you don't have to be modified. So now you we're on to the Lego part where we got to hear it. I mean, let warm up a bit first. We'll have a cold start sound, oh, and then we'll let it warm up a little bit. <laughs> you gotta have the cold start. Yeah, we're good. That is ridiculously complex compared to just a seatbelt. <laughs> right, so, and over there, where's 60 on there? Right, so, are you ready? Yep. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. You weren't expecting to be that quickly. No! <laughs> Made for a natural aspirated car, that has some pull to it. It's nippy, isn't it? Woo! That's definitely going to be the power to weight ratio. Yeah, that's it. It's under power to foot, but it's the, the fact that it's got no weight to it. That's what does it. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh. So we'll come back when you put turbo on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll see yeah. how quick it is. <laughs> yeah, that is mint. Plenty of legroom. I'm 6'3". And I can sit comfortably. Yeah. I could do a long distance journey in this. So that's going to uh, conclude this episode. Thank you very much for letting me do this. I'll All keep right. knocking the, on the window. If you hear the tapping sound. Um, yeah, this is the Toyota Starlet SR. Limited edition. Yep. Thank you very much for doing this. Nice uh, hopefully we'll get you on again if you get the turbo in there. <laughs> You'll see. But, uh, yeah, so it'll be in future videos. Obviously, when I do like uh, either track days, if I ever go to one yeah. or events, but you'll definitely see them again. So, yeah, thank you very Smart. much for that. Yeah, no worries. Peace. See you in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>